time for some creation. We haven't really created much yet. Let's do some drawing, what do you say? We're going to work with basic shapes, and we're going to work from blank documents. Start from scratch. So let's go up to the word file in Adobe Illustrator and go down to New. Now it doesn't really matter when you think about it if all we're doing is practicing and we have no real intent here what you choose. Now I'm going to go into Profile Web though and choose the default profile for web which is 960 by 560 and click OK. Why? Because it just looks so good in my drawing viewing area. Anyway. These are the tools that we're going to start with right over here. Don't forget, I've got this double bar over here. You might be in a single, but I do that because of the constraints of my window. And if I click and hold on that, you're going to see all these nice tools. I'm going to go ahead and peel those out of there, tear them off. I like doing that. It gives me a sense of power. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six tools in this set. We'll go through them kind of quickly. But there are some things, I mean this is kind of 101, okay, I mean basic drawing. To some of you it might be old hat, so I hope I can maybe give you a couple of keys here to help you out. Shortcut keys, modifiers actually. Let's do this. Let's start with the rectangle, and we come over here and select it. Now if you just click on the screen, you'll get the rectangle box, dialog box, and it gives you a default 100 by 100 pixels. You click OK, boom, instant box. Let me get rid of that one. Now that's delete on a Macintosh and the backspace key in Windows. I love these different keys. If I draw, you guys know this, if I draw basically I can draw a box. Now the modifier keys, shift key, pretty common, draws a perfectly proportioned square. The alt key allows me to uh, draw in and out from center. Now that's the option key on a Mac, alt key in Windows. And if I hold the alt or option key down and the shift key, see now we're getting complicated, Basically, I can draw a perfect square out from center. Now, if I let go of my mouse first, then you can let go of the modifier keys. Now, let's give that a color. Over here is the fill and the stroke. Remember, all objects in a vector program are strokes and fills. And I can come over here to my swatches. I can come up here. It doesn't matter. Give it a color so it doesn't just blend in with the background. Now, this button down here while we're talking, this button here is a default. If you draw an object and you want the default, you want it to have a stroke, and you want it to have a fill, it will give it a white fill with a black stroke. Let's take that back to something else. And we know that if we pick up our move tool, we can now pick it up, move it, and resize it, rotate it, do just about anything we want in a very basic way. We're still talking basics here. Okay, let me go ahead and get rid of that one. Let me, uh, well, let me draw another one real quick, say something like that, and let me come over and start drawing another one. Now, let's say for the sake of argument that this one is going to work with the one that's already over there. So you could draw it to about where you think it should be, and then you could move it over there and then further play around with it, right? Well, check this out. I've still got it in drawing mode. I call that being live. I still have my finger on my drawing tablet or my pen, and I'm drawing with it. If I hold down the space bar, watch what happens with the space bar. It locks the shape in to whatever you currently have it at, and now I can move it, and if I let go of the space bar, I'm uh, drawing again. So it's not that you can't modify the shape after it's been drawn, but this gives you, well, just a quicker way to do it, I guess. Now you let go of your mouse or drawing tablet first, obviously, and then you can let go of the space bar, and it gives it to you. Now, if you do want to change one of these, but you don't want to go back to the selection tool, if you come over on your keyboard and hold down the control key, and that would be the uh, command key on a Mac, control key in Windows, and you select one, you could pick it up. You could change it as long as you're holding that key down. You have control. When you let go, you're back to whatever drawing tool you had. So that's another one that can help you out. Let's do control A, delete. Here's another one I like, and that's the rounded rectangle. If I come over and start drawing with it, I get a rounded rectangle. If I click my mouse somewhere, you can see it has a corner radius. And the corner radius is determined by how you use it or the last time you used it. It's called sticky. Okay, so I, last time I used it, I had a 21. The default actually is 12. And that will be there if you close the program down and reopen it with a new document. And don't forget where that is. If you go to the word Edit in Windows or Illustrator on a Mac and go to Preferences and go into General Preferences, your default corner radius is right here. 
So if you're doing a particular project and you want the corner radius to always be the same thing, you could do it right here, change it. I'm going to click OK. So I have one object that has a corner radius of, what was it, 21, and this one over here has now got 12, big deal. Let me go ahead and do Control A Delete. When I draw something, the math to me is important because once I've established something, then I need the math to kind of replicate or do things over and over again. That makes sense, and, and that's important. But my initial way of doing something is visually, not mathematically. So when I'm drawing again, basically I don't like that corner radius, and I know a higher number is going to be uh, more exaggerated and a lower one will be sharper, but I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what a 21 looks like. Well, here's what you want to do. As you're drawing, reach over on your keyboard with your other hand. Don't let go of the mouse or your drawing tablet, and press the up and down arrow keys. That's the up arrow key, and this is the down. Now, if you use the left and right, you can go all the way back to square or maximum. Left and right is minimum, maximum, and up and down is increase or decrease. Once I've established visually what I want, I can then click my mouse over here, and I can see that's 25 points, and maybe I'll make a note of that because I need other things at 25 points. So using the up and down arrow keys, don't forget the shift keys and all the other stuff we talked about. Let's get rid of that. The circle or the ellipse tool is actually rather boring. It draws ellipses. If you hold the shift key, it draws circles. If you use the alt key, it goes out from center. If you use the alt key and the shift key, it goes out from center and it's a perfect circle. That's it. Boring. Let's go to this one right here, the polygon tool. Polygon tool does, by default, six-sided polygons. Now, if you click your mouse, say over here somewhere, you can see it's got six sides, and that's the last thing we drew. You want another one, click OK. Now, we can change the sides there, but we can also do it while we're drawing by pressing the up and down arrow keys. A lot of people say, how do you make a triangle? Well, you start with the polygon and remove sides until you have three. Okay, there's that one. Let me go ahead and Control A, Delete again, or Command A on a Macintosh. The star. Hmm. If we come over here and draw, we get a typical, you can hold the shift key down, you get a five-pointed star. Now here is a radius one and a radius two, which is what I did over here. Radius one is the outside point and radius two is the inside point. So if you want that to be different, maybe you want the star points out further, you could change that number. You could change this number to bring the inside in and you can change the points. Let's not do it that way. Now again, I'm drawing. If I press the up and down arrow keys, I can add more points. I can make a triangle this way too, but that's not all. Let me go ahead and go back to something like that. If I hold down the Alt key, it straightens the sides out. That's more of an American flag star. That's not. They're straight like that, but watch what happens while I'm holding the Alt key down as I begin moving it. So it just gets bigger and it stays in proportion. Now, Instead of holding the Alt key down, or with the Alt key if you want to, hold down the Control key. That's Control and Windows Command on a Mac, and watch what happens. It freezes that inside radius and allows you to change the outside. Now, if I let go, say here, I can move it around. If I hold the Control key or the Command key on a Mac again, I can do that again. I can still use things like my up and down arrow keys. And there you go. Now again, it will remember the last thing you drew until you close and reopen Illustrator. Let me go ahead and do a Control A or Command A on a Mac. Delete. The last one is to me the tool where I say, why did they make this tool? Um, I don't use it a lot, let me put it that way. You might. It's a flare tool. Actually, I do use it occasionally. But it draws lens flares, which I find ironic on photographs because all my life as a photographer, I uh, did my best to stamp out lens flares in photographs. And now that I've got programs like Illustrator and Photoshop, I put them back on again. If you just click your mouse, just go ahead and click, you get all these different options, like the diameter of the center, the opacity, the brightness, how many rays do you want? Now, when I see the word fuzziness, that's how long they are. I think the word random. That's not really accurate, but it's close enough. In other words, if I take fuzziness down to zero, they're all going to be the same length. The more fuzziness, the more random they're going to be. 
you've got halo growth and fuzziness, and you've got rings and direction. Let's go ahead and cancel. There's another way you can do these. If you come over somewhere and click and drag, and then move over someplace else and click and drag where you want it to go and then let go, you're kind of controlling, I guess, the process. To me, that almost looks like a solar system. The lens flare tool out of all of them is probably the one I use the least, but I have used it on very small objects, like maybe on a pair of glasses, on a vector drawing of a person. There are reasons I would use it. And I might actually, looking at that, use it for something like a solar system. These are the basic tools so far. So let's go ahead and move on.